Hey buds, welcome back to Madibles and welcome to our Jaden Animations reaction. I've only seen a few things on our channel because we've, uh, I, I watched through the Pokemon stuff and then that was a fantastic time. And now I'm starting to react to the, uh, Vox Machina series. I'm like, hey, I know she released a Dungeons and Dragons video, so I wanted to check that out. But as always, if there's something you want to watch me react to, please leave in the comments below. I greatly appreciate it. Otherwise, let's get into it. Hey, how's it going? Check out this thing. <sighs> greatly appreciate it. I'm on the push to 100k. If you like content, if you want someone to keep you company, hey, I'd be honored. Anyway, this is uh, my first time playing Dungeons & Dragons. Before we get started, are you familiar with this? Are you just watching this because I watched this? Or you found me through the other way, the other way around, from because you know her content. You want to see people react to her stuff because her stuff is fantastic. Hi, how's it going? Uh, also, who's your favorite class to play as? I love uh, bards, druids, and clerics. Yeah the board and you play using your imagination. If you think of something, it can just happen in game. D&D is very popular. Almost everyone I've ever met absolutely loves it and I have never played it before even though I always thought I would really like it. People mm -hmm. would tell me stories of their games like so this one time me and my party were entering a cave and there was a big ogre guarding some treasure but I used my charisma stat to seduce him and we ended up eloping together. Dude if you don't think that sounds crazy fun then I don't think we would get along and you should probably probably unsubscribe but if you do think that sounds fun then hey sorry I've never done that before it felt weird I decided <laughs> yes, I feel that I feel that I do feel that I I got into a habit of just like hey check out this thing which is whenever I put up the the uh, little picture because I, I want to be as less intrusive as possible but you know you, you might want to just ask people because sometimes sometimes it's all it's all it takes is like hey please consider it maybe maybe you like it maybe you like me you know, so I, I totally get that. But boy, what was it rough at first. To reach out to Charlie, aka Slimesicle, aka Charlie Slimesicle, because he's super into D and D, and we ended up forming a little group of me, Alpharad, Ronbu as the players, and Charlie as the dungeon master. Huh, a little three-person party. I think that's nice. I've I've only done one, um, I guess a few sessions. You know, I I've done, I played a little bit. I didn't get to play as much as I'd like to because I boy. Do I love role playing? I love creative problem solving. I love everything about it. It's it's a great time. Also, I'm great right now. But uh, I love Dungeons and Dragons, and I want a, I want like an intense, um, campaign. I want to like have stakes. I want I want to I want to get into it. You know, I want to dig into my character and I want to learn about the world and all that shit. I think it's a great time and that's what I want. Which is like the game organizer slash manager slash god. Manager. We all created our characters and into the world. Hold on, we gotta look at the characters. Manager slash manager slash god. We all created our characters. Huh. Well, she's a dragon, so I mean, that's fine. Um, I know the cats exist and that's a very cute cat. All right, I will say, adorable. Alfred, what the fuck? Are you supposed to be a tiefling? A businessman tiefling? And into the world we were teleported. The clouds part over a vast, lush forest. In it, a giant ancient oak tree can be found looming over all the other trees. The inside has been hollowed out, and a sign hangs on the side reading Old Oak Inn. Inside, many creatures of various origins are relaxing, drinking, socializing. <gasps> I get the I get the reference. Look at that. Because <laughs> I reacted to the trailers. I understand this now. That's cute. Um, is this Zelda? A one stands out. A cat, equipped with various instruments, sits at a table, leaning over their cup of milk and scanning the room. They spot a dragonborn drinking at the bar, alone, seemingly pondering life. From the other end of the bar, a man in a suit approaches the dragon and starts a casual conversation. Do you know Mark? No, I I don't. Who are you? I'm Paul. I'm an assistant manager at Ye Old <laughs> Mart of Wall. 43 years old. My wife passed away during childbirth. My oh my god, Ye Old Mart of Wall? <laughs> my parents died, and my only child, Paul Jr., ran away at age six. I'm living a deadbeat life, not even able to go up in the corporate ladder because my manager, Mark, prevents me from doing so. So here I am, drinking away my woes. I'm I'm Zoot. Hi, uh, excuse me. Are... I I thought he was a tiefling at first because I thought those white things were horns, but I guess it's just his hair. My bad. He might just be a human. Are you too new around here? Born and raised. I wish I was. Okay. Um. So I I've been stuck in a time loop for what I believe to be the past three years. I've relived the same day over and over. Uh. I I suspect my neighbor Thomas somehow trapped me here, but I I don't know how to escape. You know what's kind of cute that I never really thought about. 
she kind of voice acts, you know? I always thought these were more of like, uh, like video essay type of things where you just kind of stay in your own um, personality and your own like reading preference voice. But like, after thinking about how the Pokemon videos went and how this is going with with her like slightly tweaking her dialect for these other characters, that it's still tough to do. Like even if they're just like little subtle differences, like remembering how you're communicating as those characters is a big deal. It's kind of cool that she does that. I never thought about it. I, I can prove it. Look over there. In about five seconds, there's a seventy percent chance a waiter is gonna trip and drop their glasses onto the ground. Cute. Well, all right, uh, it's a bit impressive, but like, it's gonna take a bit more convincing because that wasn't all that. Suddenly, a sheep crashes through the tavern windows and starts rampaging around the inn. It's going straight up crazy, knocking over tables, knocking over people. Paul mentions it's got something in its mouth and the sheep immediately stops and runs straight up to him. As Paul takes Cute. what seems to be a scroll out of the sheep's mouth, Zoot whips out their mace in an attempt to pepper spray the sheep, but slips on a puddle of rum and accidentally sprays Paul. What the fuck is going on? Where is this campaign? Who just is disappointed at this point. The three open the scroll and Zoot, recognizing it's a speak with animals spell, translates it, casting a huge shockwave and blasting everything in its radius. Um, hello. Can you understand me now? Why the f <laughs> did you try to spray me with mace? Zoot and the sheep start bickering as Paul and Tholomew just stare at them. Just, just forget it, forget it. I'm no ordinary sheep. I used to be human and was cursed into a sheep's body. Cute. My name is Luop and I need your help Luop. becoming human again, please. All right, Lop. Well, uh, it's Luop. Come on guys, let's go. And for some reason, they all went along with it, still not understanding what the hell is going on. Maybe they both thought they could find their arch enemies. I, I think I would watch decades of days of this kind of campaign in this kind of like, like I, I know that there's not more because I feel like I would have seen it if it popped up. I, I feel like it would have gone absolutely nuts because it's, you know, it's a D D campaign that's animated. I'm like, it's gonna get millions of views, obviously. But I've only seen the one, so I, I wonder if she's just condensing the whole like campaign or the story, or if, if it was a one-off kind of thing, just into the small little thing. But like, if they did this weekly, I think it would go nuts. Mark and Thompson along the way. The group is walking through the woods. Tholomew is very on edge, feeling like something isn't quite right. The tree line is shifting in unnatural ways. Oak trees are turning into birch. The bushes are rustling. Zoot spots various random animals along the path and picks up a turtle, which they add to their inventory. Paul tries to pocket a turtle of his own, but it turns out to be a rock and is then mauled by a cougar. He ends up unharmed, though his adventure suit he changed into is now ruined. Zoot feels bad about Paul not getting a turtle, so they offer to let Paul name theirs, to which he chooses Paul Jr. Hold on, she animated each one of these words we're going through. All right. So they offer to let Paul name theirs. Okay. So we got Kitty, Wirt, George Washington, classic, Mr. President, sure. Benjamin Franklin, okay, Dr. Cucumber, Greg, Skipper, Ronald, Jonathan L. Applesauce, Jason Funderbunker, Bongwater, Paul Jr. They eventually reach a clearing with a large stone outcrop covered in engraved shifting runes. Carved into a stone is a large bronze door with a face on it. Hello? You should try to impress it. Uh, oh, okay. Great. One little thing I wanted to share about my campaign is since I'm like such a huge like personality, we'll say, uh, I'm very like talkative and I want to like just jump into things. I want to start fixing things and solving things. Um, since the campaign was mainly revolved around my like my partner was, I want her to be the main character because I want, I, I want her to be the main character. I want her to go on her adventure and I want to be there for the ride. So what I did was I made my character a, um, a warforged druid that couldn't really speak well. So it prohibited me for taking charge and like going for like the first answers and like just taking control over the campaign. I didn't, I didn't want that. Even though I really wanted to like go on my own adventure, I wanted to share like the adventure with everybody else. So I talk 
quiet, slow. Kind of stuff like that, you know. That's it. Anyway. You can go in. I'm a riddle door. The alphabet goes from A to Z. Yes. I go from Z to A. Who am I? A backwards alphabet. The alphabet backwards. Oh. The answer was zebra. Who is next? Honestly, that was kind of cute, though. I move without wings between silken strings. I weave as you may find. My substance. Um, I'm I'm gonna say a spider because I got the butt strings. Huh. Wait, but can you turn our friend back? No. Oh yeah, double or nothing. Answer this next riddle, and your friend will be turned back. I creep and crawl with no eyes, legs, or ears, but I can move the earth. With my ears, what am I? Uh, mm. can you use it in a sentence? <laughs> um, the answer to the question? Yeah, like, like, spelling me, stop. Is she doing a persuasion check? I don't know. Nice try, but you're not gonna worm your way out of this. Damn. Hmm. I, I think I picked up on it. I, I don't know if you noticed, but he said worm on accident. I'm very detail oriented. Don't listen to him. He's a zebra. Paul Jr., what do you think the answer is? <laughs> Turtle. Turtle, final answer. It's, it's a, a worm. Correct. <laughs> the adventurers walk through the door's mouth, Great which job, closes guys. behind them. As they're walking into an open room, they're greeted by a closed silver door. Zood immediately pitches the turtle at the door, but nothing happens. There's three dishes of clay placed in front of three pedestals. And Wait, all right, real quick. For those of you that are here that like know a lot about D&D, where the fuck did it come from? You know, just all of a sudden was someone like, you know what? I want to make a rule book. And that became the official rule book for the, the, like, did people just do it like randomly and made up their own rules as they went beforehand? Like who decided like, you know what? This is, this is the new, this is the new shit right here. I'm just kind of curious how that works out because at some point it didn't exist. And the door face emerges once again, this time on the ceiling. In order to continue, create whatever you want. Not wanting to deal with more riddles, Zoot throws a dagger into the door's eye. Ah, you, fine, I'm not helping you with this one. The group, now lost with no direction, decides for some reason to all start eating the clay. Jaden is definitely my partner. She would definitely ask a turtle for an answer for a riddle, and then she would also probably attack a wall-talking being. Even feeding some to Paul Jr. and Lop against their wills. After all the clay has been consumed, the pillars glow red and more clay drops down from the ceiling, resetting the puzzle. Huh. Out of ideas, huh. they decide to do what the door face suggested. Solomew sculpts a crown, Cute. Zoot rolls out a worm, Cute. and Paul builds a penguin. Cute. They all place their creations on pedestals, which sink in and beam green before the lights turn out and everything goes dark. They flash back on and suddenly all their creations have come to life in weird clay flesh bodies. Man. I mean, the worm one was a good idea. But then it's just a giant snake. The crown one was also a good idea, but it looked like a fucking spider. In your experience, in your mind, please leave me let, let me know in the comments below what you would have created. What do you think is the best thing you could have created as a clay monster? Like, a, a, what, what would you have made that would have made this significantly easier? Because I honestly don't know. Maybe, like, a ladder could be an easy thing to kill. I wouldn't say a ball, because that would crush you. That sounds like the worst option here. Um. Huh. I wouldn't even... I wouldn't, I don't know. I don't know what would be a, like maybe a no not a bunch of little things either. What's the most annoying stupid thing you can make that'd be so easy to beat up? 
Paul cleaves at his penguin with a great axe, nearly cutting it clean in half, revealing that the inside is just more clay. The worm monster looks at Zoot and says, It's worming time! Causing Zoot to scream and sending a shockwave towards it, immediately exploding the worm and splattering clay everywhere, living as a normal-sized worm now. The worm lunges and wraps itself around Zoot's throat, trying to choke them out. Tholomew rips the arms off the crown monster and dodges its follow-up attack. The penguin reforms itself, sprints full speed at Paul, but slips and splats into a pile of clay on the ground, to which Paul finishes off with his axe. Meanwhile, Tholomew attempts to rip the legs off the crown, only for the crown legs to turn into arms, grabbing Tholomew and climbing onto their head, causing them to lose their mind, uh, viewing the other party members- I fucking hate mind control as enemies. Paul shifts his attention to Tholomew, throwing his great axe horizontally at the crown. Unfortunately, it goes a bit low and the handle smacks Tholomew directly in the face. Zoot gets a grip on the worm, ripping it off their throat, and breathes acid onto it until it's reduced to ash. Sick. Tholomew blows on their bagpipes to attack Paul, sending out a thunderous shockwave that shakes the cavern. Paul is able to hold his ground, runs up to the two, and successfully cleaves the crown off Tholomew's head. Nice. All the clay monsters have been defeated. The silver door opens, and Everyone cheers together in celebration. The adventurers enter the new room to be greeted by wooden structures, spiral staircases, plat and a little camp, there's a little tent camp, platforms, and a golden door at the very back wall. It looks like a camp is set up inside the area, and voices can be heard above on one of the platforms. Tholomew scans the area, looking for traces of their neighbor, Thompson. Not only do they discover a pack of goblins that have inhabited the area, but he also recognizes a familiar boot print in the clay. It's the same type Thompson wears. He's been here. Paul climbs up to the goblin platform and sparks conversation. The goblins are confused and a bit wary of the intruders, but introduce themselves nonetheless. I'm Gob. That's Glob. That's Gobble. That's Gobble Gob. And that's the peeler. <laughs> <laughs> and who's that? That's Bloyle. Boyle. So your names are Gob, Glob, Gobble, Gobble, Gob, Peeler, and Boyle. The Peeler. Got it. So your name is the Peeler. You don't know anything about Mark or Thomas. That, that's the first one you want to go to, Alpha Red. You go straight for the Peeler. That's the one you want to talk to. I only know about one thing, peeler. and that's Peeler. Yeah. Oh, okay, geez. all right, all right, we're leaving, we're leaving! Paul starts booking it to the door they came in through, the peeler right on his tail, stabbing at his ankles. No one else is doing or saying anything, they're just watching. Paul makes it back to the previous room, and the peeler slinks into the shadows. With Paul in the other room, and Tholomew and Zoot unable to speak goblin, Tholomew is left trying to communicate through improvised sign language, pointing Fair. at the door and blowing kisses at the goblins to signal peace. Zoot tries to slip around the goblins in the meantime, as communication is clearly not working and the goblins are only getting more aggressive, but they bump into an invisible force they can't see, alerting the goblins who are now initiating combat. Oh Zoot decides to keep God, running- Oh my God, Zoot, what are you doing? She's so chaotic. ...to the door as Tholomew bangs on their drums, sending sound shock waves at the attacking goblin. What, what is he? Is he a bard? Gob, Glob, and Gobble are all sent flying off the edge of the platform, falling to their deaths. Gobble Gob, in a fit of rage after losing his friends, lunges at Tholomew but misses completely, sending himself off the edge of the platform too. The Peeler emerges from the shadows to lunge at Tholomew, who is taking up Loyal, but Paul jumps in just in time, clashing blades with him. As everyone is distracted, Zoot gets to the door, peeking in to see an entirely golden room with a small golden rod shaped like a tree branch floating at the center. The branch shifts between between valuable materials, at one moment being made of gold, then emerald, then ruby. Gobble Gob, the goblin that accidentally dove off the side of the platform, sprints back up the stairs and attempts to tackle Tholomew off the platform, but accidentally leaps over him and plummets once again over the edge, this time to his demise. I... <laughs> I don't know what he needs to roll to be able to do that twice in a row, but I guess... He's lucky. Unless it was more of a dexterity check, because I guess that could be a thing too with it, but you know. Paul and Tholomew perform a clumsy team attack together and finish off the peeler, ending the battle, but because of the uncoordinated attack, Paul's axe is now peeled. No. They all hurry over to Zoot and enter the golden room together, trying to figure out how to get the artifact down. Zoot suggests they all toss Lop into the air to get it down, so Paul so long he bowsers the sheep into the air. So <laughs> 
at first i'm like what the fuck is she talking about so long game and then yeah that's right the, the big old spin I mean, that makes sense i want to hear that again flop into the air to get it down so paul so long gay bowser's the sheep into the air but in the complete opposite direction tholomew quickly runs over and breaks his fall and before lop can say anything they throw him again this time hitting their target as they both fall to the ground no one stops lop's fall this time as he lays motionless on the floor sure. as tholomew is healing up lop zoot approaches the wand only for it to be snatched by an invisible force an unseen figure then reveals itself well hey there neighbor oh Zan. paul it's me your good friend mark thompson <gasps> no! tholomew you ruined my life spreading false rumors about me you said i cursed you and now no one wants to talk to me my wife and kids left me everyone avoids me so i spent years becoming a dark wizard and i'm gonna have my revenge what about me and you paul anyway yeah <laughs> you all are gonna be spending the rest of your lives here in this shift sanctum i'll be going now that was a smooth little exit. Tholomew quickly casts Locate Object on the wand Mark is now holding and throws ink in the general direction, hoping to reveal where Mark is, but Bear? unfortunately he doesn't land. Zoot sprints in the direction- That was such a nice idea. I would be- I would be cheering for that if I was there, alright? If that was someone in my camp, I'd be like, oh, that's beautiful. And then it fucking didn't work. Tholomew indicated and attempts to tackle the air. They make contact, but bounce off of Mark's rock-solid beer gut, breaking the invisibility spell. Tholomew whips out their drums, slamming it with the intent to cast a thunder wave on Mark, sending okay. him flying from the impact. Zoot follows behind and shouts, DEPRESSION! <laughs> casting a command spell. That was a sick audio edit, too. On him. He stops in his tracks, facing Zoot, and says, I'm so sad. Having never dealt with depression before, he pulls out a picture of his ex-wife and kids and just stares at it longingly. <laughs> Paul and Tholomew see their chance to attack him and once again try to use an ultimate team attack. Start with the team attacks, is that a thing? Are they just trying, is this like a rule of cool thing or like... They grip Paul's peeled axe together and throw it in tandem at Mark. But once again, they mess up and Tholomew is accidentally sent flying with the axe as it pierces Mark's chest. Mark is unfazed, still wallowing in his depression, but Zoot sees this as an opportunity, casting disguised self and visually turning themselves into Mark's ex-wife. Ella, huh. is that you? It is. This is, this is Kirby. Is this Kirby Air Ride, or is this just Kirby? Uh, Mark. Mark drops the photo and wand, sobbing, and slowly walks towards Zoot, who has their arms out, ready for his embrace. He grabs Zoot and pulls him close, tears streaming down his face. It's, it's been so hard. I... Sh it's okay. I'm here now. <laughs> Zoot pulls back, just a bit, just to look into Mark's eyes, which are sparkling with tears. And proceeds to acid blast him point blank from the mouth. <laughs> Mark is heavily damaged but alive, snapping back to reality and throwing Paul's axe to the ground. If I can't have the wand, no one can! Paul That's fucking nuts. Beautiful play though. Picks up one part of his peeled axe. Looks like the manager position just opened up. How, how does he not like peel out both sides and just have like two tomahawk axes? That would have been sick. He throws the axe and hits Mark, but doesn't kill him. He then picks up the other peeled axe part to throw as well, but it boomerangs around and hits him in the back of the head. Tholomew grabs the wand from the ground and points it at Mark. This is for everything. The low tax return. The yep. restraining order. For moving in next to me. You're my personal hell! Yeah! Mark turns to Paul while being zapped by the wand. Would you still let me be your manager? Even if I was a... You're fired. You guys did it! Please, use the wand to turn me back into a human. Please! Tholomew casts the wand's powers on Talop, finally turning him back into his original form. Paul and now human Luop lock eyes. <gasps> it's... Hi, Dad. Paul Jr. Is that you? 
Oh, <laughs> Holland is long lost son. Paul Jr. embraces the wand. Now all out of magic, crumbles into dust, and the party exits the cave. The bomb is dead, and the explosions erupt behind them as the group walks off together. Thanks for watching. This was a different type of video, but I hope you enjoyed it. Especially, it was awesome. Uh, well, all right, let me finish her. Really big thanks to Charlie, Ron, Boo, and Jacob for the great D&D session. It was super fun, and I really want to play more. I'd like to upload highlights of the actual D&D session to my second channel eventually, but it's not ready yet because I am bad at planning. So maybe Fair. that'll happen one day. Anyway, this was a big project. Thank you to the team, as always, and to Sir Meow for the sound effects. Links to everyone are in the description. Okay, I will see you later. Bye-bye. Cute. What a cute little outro. I hope you guys enjoyed the reaction. That was delightful. I want to react to more things, obviously, as I love to do. But thank you so much for being here. If you got made it to the end, uh, consider liking, commenting, and subscribing to Mattables for more reaction content. See ya.